Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel and today I have another book box to share with you. Now normally I do mostly lifestyle boxes but there's definitely been an uptick of book boxes in the last month and that will continue through at least the end of the year because I am on a mission to get caught up on all of my book boxes, particularly the ones where they include items, they include gifts that go along with the selected read. Now I've got about 20 boxes to Go, and I've gotten a lot of seasonal boxes and new boxes as well. I'm trying to keep up to date on those as well as going through the backlog so you're gonna see more book boxes than usual. I really appreciate those of you who watch videos even if it's not necessarily a category of subscription that you usually go for but just remember these book boxes make such fantastic gifts. I think this is a really good time of year to check out some of the different options. Now the one that I am sharing with you today is the Literary Book Club. Now this is a quarterly subscription. It is $74.99 plus $11.99 in shipping and I do have an affiliate link and code for you. The code is just Maui Noel and that will save you $5. And it doesn't work on everything. It mostly works on the subscription but you can always check it out on the limited edition boxes as well. Now this box is the fall box essentially and there is still a December box coming up as well as a Christmas limited edition so good things to check out. Out. She does such a beautiful job. Katie is a artist, a very skilled, very talented artist. So we get some of her artwork to complement these classic reads because yes, this is a classic novel subscription. Sometimes she'll do a collection of short stories as she did for the special Halloween box, which you will also be seeing here on my channel. Now I am considered a literary book club ambassador now. I was a subscriber and now I'm an ambassador. So this box was sent to me for review and I will be having their advent calendar on the channel as well. So be on the lookout for that because I'm probably going to do a whole advent series as well as a 12 days of Christmas series. So there's going to be a lot of videos, lots of opportunity to check out lots of boxes, you guys. All right. So inside, now usually this is filled with shred as well, but I've taken all of that out because I do like to read the actual books, even if it's one that I've already read. So again, you can see this gorgeous artwork. Of course, we have our Jane Austen quote, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library. I'm not sure if there are still some December persuasion boxes available, you guys, but she did get a limited extra run of them. So if you can still get in on that, I highly suggest it. I think that's going to be a beautiful, beautiful box. But inside we always have a bunch of gifts and you can see some of them have page numbers written on them to go along with. Some of them will say like open when the last page has been read but it is really fun to experience the novel even if it's one that's familiar like I said in a different way. There's a nice sealed uh, envelope for us and I opened it from the top so that I could save that. And here again is some of that gorgeous, gorgeous artwork because the novel for fall was The Great Gaps by F. Scott Fitzgerald. So she actually gave us a nice little like summary. Sometimes she talks a little bit more about the history of the writing of the book, but let me go ahead and read it to you just in case. Um, most of us have probably seen the movie, maybe both movies, the one with Leo and the one with Robert Redford back in the day. That's the one I think we all saw in school when we read it. It says, set during the roaring 20s, this masterful story by F. Scott Fitzgerald is told through the eyes of Nick Carraway, a young man who moves to Long Island and attempts to learn the bond business in New York City after the war. There he co-mingles on Long Island with his affluent and wealthy socialite cousin Daisy Buchanan, her brood of a husband Tom, and friend Jordan Baker. Nick's new residence sits across the bay from Daisy and Tom's house and right next to the, a mysterious mansion. He begins to hear rumors of an infamous man named Gatsby who resides there. Eventually, when Gatsby learns of Nick's ties to Daisy, he extends Nick an invitation to one of his lavish parties. Gatsby's plan to court Daisy in an attempt to revive a previous love affair eventually bubbles to the surface and tragedy ensues. Dubbed the great American novel more than any other piece of literature to date, The Great Gatsby is sure to captivate readers with its exquisitely crafted prose and poignant message about trying to relive the past. I can't wait to hear what you think of the book, the gifts, and the whole experience. So of course I think probably more than half of us probably had to do a book report or some kind of paper on The Great Gatsby and there are so many themes to pick up and of course there's the very famous last page. If you don't remember anything of the plot you probably remember the green light, right? So 
This is a gorgeous, gorgeous Chiltern edition. So we've got these beautiful gilt uh, binding here. Of course, it does have a ribbon bookmark and then of course the nice gold edging. It's not a very long novel. It is a very quick read and um, I think that the movies are pretty good. The movies are pretty good. I love anything with Baz Luhrmann directing just as such a like spectacle, um, but it's a, uh, it's a good book. I honestly, I think it's, I still, I still love it when I read it. Some people are like, eh, I don't need to read that again, but I love the opportunity to read classics that I haven't gotten around to, which has been the case with some of the books from Literary Book Club and the opportunity to reread other ones. So we also got a nice swag bag as usual. So we usually get some fun stuff in here. So let me show you what we got this time around. Um, we got a bookmark with a quote. So we beat on boats against the current, borne back ceases ceaselessly into the past. And of course, that is from that famous last page. We've got a nice uh, gal in a 20s style dress with a low dropped waist. Love that image. And we loved it so much that I'm very glad that Katie gave it to us as a sticker. So I'm wondering if this is, to me, this looks maybe more like Jordan, even though Jordan like has a little bit more more of a masculine style as a golfer because um, Daisy I feel like is classically blonde. All right we also got this sticker which says I love her and that is the beginning and end of everything. That's cool. There's that. I think that's actually from a different F. Scott Fitzgerald novel. I think. And here we have a book plate. So lots of fun little things. Two stickers, a bookmark, and a book plate. I actually just used the ribbon bookmark when I was going through it but I always love the like nice slick thick pages of a Chiltern edition and then like I said there are some gifts that are associated with pages some that are not for example we did get this one which is while you read and she is so great about always including like snacks and drinks because you know that's one of the great pleasures about reading I think um I, I do really love it, although when I have a really pretty edition like this, I'm always like, I'll have something nice to drink, but I don't want anything that's going to get like on my fingers. So let me go ahead and open that up. But you know, it's so fun to open up little gifts inside. This is pretty cool. I've never tried anything like this. So it's from Leisureman's. It's an old fashioned, but mix. Now I do like me a good old fashioned. There's lots of drinking in this in this story, even though it's like, you know, they they're weren't supposed to be drinking as quite as much as they were. So you just add an ounce of water, you dissolve the packet in here for the flavoring, and then you add two ounces of spirit, you know, so probably your bourbon and ice, and then you have your old fashioned. If So if you don't have like a full bar set up and you know, you can just do it this way. I'm not sure how good it's gonna be. Like I like a good old fashioned, like made for me at the bar and like the nice highball glass, but I think it's worth trying and it definitely goes with the vibe of the book. So very cool thing to have. We also got, and I think this is because it was the one year anniversary of Literary Book Club. She also included this like birthday cake Rice Krispie treat for us, which I just thought was really cool. Um, so I'm not super behind on this one. I'm pretty much caught up on my Literary Book Club boxes, even though I still have a Halloween box and I know that there's two more coming, but I'm pretty caught up on this one. So this hasn't been sitting in the box for very long. I think this was probably part of my inspiration to stay on top of it with this particular subscription. All right, and then I'm gonna show you, we do have something for, now what I usually do, because she doesn't do sticky notes or anything in the books, um, I'll usually go through and look at all of the gifts, first of all, to make sure if there's something that I'm supposed to enjoy while I read, and then find all of the page numbers, and then I'll use little book tabs. Um, I use these little like nice metal darts that she provided from another box, and I'll mark the pages so that I know when it's time to go and enjoy one of my gifts. So I'm gonna show you one of them and then of course I'll read the excerpt so I just use these little darts but you could use little like sticky tabs or whatever so we had I believe this time around in addition to a drink to enjoy while we read our um, swag bag our little extra <laughs> snacky there we also had four gifts that were associated with pages one gift that is to be open when you finish the book and then of course we have our gorgeous print which is something that is in every literary book club box as well she always includes a lovely quote print so I know a lot of you like to change out your quote prints while, while you're reading just to create an atmosphere. So again, this is the same one that was, I believe, on the bookmark. No, this is the one that was also on the sticker. So it says, I love her. And that is the beginning and end of everything. So 
again, I don't remember this quote from The Great Gatsby, even though it really is about being able to start over from the past. And that's what he does assure Nick. He's like, yes, I can. I can start over. I can make Daisy love me the same way that she loved me five years ago. Um, but I'm not sure. And I think she like told us about it, why she chose that particular one. So let me see. Yeah, it is beautiful though. I love the roses. I was like, re as I was rereading, I was like, was there like the symbol of a rose at some point in the book? But I don't think there was. It was just, for me, it was always like the green light was the, 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 the thing. But the roses, of course, go really well with the cover with these like red accents. So there were uh, five, five additional gifts and then the quote card, the uh, quote print, the swag bag, the snacks and drink. All right, you guys. So now at the bottom of the box, she does always include like your cheat sheet where it tells you everything that's in the box. So if you wanna go and like look at that, you can, but I try to be good about not doing it until I uh, actually read the pages. So on page, let's see, 48. So hopefully I have these all marked and I will be reading the passage and then I will show you the gift that goes along with it. So he is at Gatsby's party and it says a pair of stage twins who turned out to be the girls in yellow did a baby act costume in costume and champagne was served in glasses bigger than finger bowls. The moon had risen higher and floating in the sound was a triangle of silver scales trembling a little to the stiff tinny drip of the banjos on the lawn. So um, Nick, our narrator, is uh, a little tipsy because they are serving giant glasses of a champagne. So we go to our page 48 uh, little bundle here. And inside we got, this was kind of cool, we got a swell insulated champagne flute with this kind of nice like marble design on the outside. So I thought this was cool, a st stemless champagne flute, which I do have a couple of those. Um, I don't have like classic champagne flutes. I thought that was cool because normally if it was a regular champagne flute, I would have been like, we need a pair of them. But in this case, because it's just like an insulated one, a more modern take on it, it makes sense to have like your own. So I kind of thought that was cool. We're also close to the holidays, like how fun to have a stemless uh, insulated champagne flute. I thought that was a pretty good uh, high value item. All right, the next one is on page 82. And again, not a long novel. So now he has, uh, Gatsby has asked Nick to invite his cousin over for tea so that he can see her after so many years away uh, and uh, he goes over to kind of spock it out and he's like well I need to have the get the grass cut I need to like he wants to make a good impression but he has to try to make a good impression at Nick's house before he can invite Daisy next door to his house which is obviously very impressive and opulent all right so this is an, again Nick's voice I took him into the pantry where he looked a little reproachfully at the fin. Together, we scrutinized the 12 lemon cakes from the delicatessen shop. Will they do, I asked. Of course, of course, they're fine. And he added hollowly, old sport. So Gatsby's a little bit disappointed because obviously he would have like had a much more lavish spread for Daisy, but you know, Nick's like a guy and he's like, I guess I'm having a lady over for tea, so I have to have these little tea cakes. So for Paige, 82 I was like ooh, we might get another snack because it's like tea time so or I thought we might be getting tea which is also appreciated and a very common thing to get in a book box we got from Grey Ghost Bakery some scratch made cookies in lemon sugar which I was like yes this is even better I'm so happy that it wasn't tea I was excited that it was representative of the lemon cakes uh, we got these nice lemon this nice lemon sugar cookie actually there's two of them in there I don't know if you guys can see nice little lemon cookies that I am so excited to finally get to enjoy. I would love to enjoy all the things as we go through the books, but of course I like to share with you guys and have the whole experience. The next one was on page 120. Oh boy. <laughs> this is where they're really getting into it because, uh, so now he has asked, Gatsby has asked Daisy to tell Tom the jig is up, you're in love with me, you're not in love with Tom, and they all go on this very tense, fraught, um, journey into the city where they decide to like rent a hotel room because it's super duper hot. So it says all this old sport business. Where'd you pick that up? That's Tom. Now you see here, Tom said Daisy turning around from the mirror. If you're going to make personal remarks, I won't stay here a minute. Call up and order some ice for the mint juleps. So mint juleps do sound very refreshing. We got this very, uh, deco, like very glitzy little bag here with the gold velvet and the, and the gold the gold velvet black velvet and gold Whew. we 
got a candle, you guys. I was excited. I was like, we can't get another drink mix. It says clean burning natural hand poured the great Gatsby mint julep. So it actually is branded a little collaboration with literary book club. We got this lovely mint julep candle, which smells amazing. I'm thinking this is, I was going to see who it was from, but maybe she actually did these herself. Man, that smells so good. So she has her own label and it smells minty and a little bit sweet, perfect. And again, I wish I could have lit it while I was reading because it would have been fun. Um, but that was a great interpretation of that particular gift. And then next, our last page associated one came on page 164. So Gatsby has unfortunately died, just in case you haven't read the book or seen the movies. I'm not going to tell you how, but yes, spoiler alert, Gatsby does die at the end. And then here is uh, Nick trying to get people to come and sort of, you know, come to the funeral, pay their respects, and he meets Gatsby's dad and says, Look here, this is a book he had when he was a boy. It just shows you. He opened at the back cover and turned it around for me to see. On the last flyleaf was printed the word schedule and the date, September 12th, 1906, and underneath. So he has his whole daily schedule and then says, general resolves, no wasting time at Shafter's, or name indecipherable, no more smoking and chewing, bath every other day, read one improving book or magazine per week, save $5, crossed out, $3 per week, be better to parents. So he's a very organized individual. He's very ambitious. He's made all of this money. He's made something of himself so that he can come back and impress Daisy. That's the whole reason he didn't come back immediately after the war to start up their affair again was because he wanted to be something more for her because he knew that she comes from money and is used to that life. So page 164. We got a little daily schedule floral notepad. So it says things I need to do and things I want to do. So two columns with check boxes. We love check boxes. I also love crossing things out. It's floral. This is not what Gatsby's agenda would look like. But again, this is a really good interpretation where it's usable by the readers of the novel, the subscribers of this particular box. And then finally, I love that she does this where she has some page number ones. And then there's almost always an open when the last page has been read gift. It's kind of fun. So this one, oop, there's another sticker here. And we got another book. This time a paperback, another one from F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Beautiful and the Damned. I love that drawing there. So we got another book. Let me go ahead and read the blurb for you. This is probably like a slightly lesser known one. So it says, F. Scott Fitzgerald's second novel brilliantly satirizes a glamorous and doomed marriage in the decadent high society of New York City in the 1920s. So kind of similar vibes. Inspired in part by Fitzgerald's own tumultuous union with his wife Zelda, the beautiful and damn chronicles the downfall of would-be jazz age aristocrats Anthony and Gloria Patch. The novel introduces us to the pleasure-seeking Anthony and his beautiful, vain, and shallow golden girl just after their marriage. When, believing a large inheritance to be imminent, they begin living well beyond their means. When the expected windfall is withheld, their lives are consumed by the pursuit of wealth and their alliance begins to disintegrate integrate. Haunting and keenly observed, The Beautiful and Damned provides a vivid portrait of a lost world and the rootless and materialistic generation that inhabited it. So very indicting portrayal, but at the same time, it's like, it's so, you really get intoxicated by all of that glamour, all of that decadence. And um, even though it is tragic, it's very something you want to read it's like I just I find it so cool and all of the like underlying tension and like how like how like pent up all of that emotion always had to be in that day and age so I kind of think that would be cool I haven't actually read that um, I have to look up where the actual quote from the print comes from but I thought this was a lovely lovely box I think I do really like it when I have the opportunity to re-read a familiar book uh, even like a favorite and I thought that the interpretation of the gifts this time around was really really good so we got a nice extra book nice extra read but the insulated champagne flute the lemon sugar cookies the candle and then the notepad all great I think my favorite is probably the candle and the cookies I think the insulated uh, flute is great and then the notepad is something that you can use for whatever you want to use it for so you guys let me know in the comments below what you thought about this one and I will see you all very very soon in my next unboxing